immorality. Every other sin that a man commits is outside of the body. But immorality, man sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you in when you have, uh, which, whom you have from God and that you are not your own? Well, let's look at it in this light. He says, the key verse here, he reminds us of the fact that we are not our own. That the body that you have, whatever shape it's in, whatever it looks like, is a dwelling place in which the Spirit lives for those that have been baptized because it says in Acts 2.38, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4.13 states that the Holy Spirit is the seal of the covenant or of the promise that we have from God of our salvation in our life. So just as God filled the, all of those tabernacles or the tabernacle and the temples, he will as well fill our bodies and it will become that temple of God. Now then, glorifying God in the body. That's kind of an interesting statement. What's glorify? How do you glorify? What do you do when you glorify? Well, one of the things is that one of the things is that that temple, which is you, is one that he says in that text that we just read where he says, flee immorality. Where he says that every other sin that a man commits is outside of the body, but immorality affects the inside. Therefore, we need to be careful what we do. I am an individual who, like Stacy, I really do like the book of Romans. And there is so much taught to us in that book. And in Romans 6, 12 through 13, it says, Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its lusts. If it rains in there, it's going to control it. Whatever is in there will control the body. He says, but the immortal man or the immoral man sins against his own body. Or did you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Whoops, I jumped up one. Let's go back and start that one over. Therefore, let, uh, let not sin reign in your, immortal, in your mortal body so that you obey its lust. And do not go on presenting the members of your body to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those alive from the dead and that your members are the instruments of the righteousness of God. Your body is an instrument to the righteousness of God. Why is that important? Because the Holy Spirit lives in you. If we do not then become the instruments, are we not, in a manner of speaking, playing down the value of what we have? Are we not glorifying God in that gift that we have? Think about this for, for a moment where he talks about the fact so that we may prove what is the will of God. This is in Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. He says, Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living, holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. That's a tall order, is it not? But when you think of the fact that God dwells in us, is that not a small 
requirement or a request from God for us because he's wanting us when we become Christians to put to death the fact uh, or the deeds of the body therefore he says consider the members of your earthly body as dead to immorality impurity passion evil desire and greed which amounts to idolatry for it is because of these that the wrath of God will come upon the, dis, uh, the children of disobedience. And in them you also once walked. You used to be that way. But you're not anymore. Because now God dwells in you through his spirit. Also, we need to realize that as we put off the deeds, Colossians makes this statement, and it's a passage I know that you're probably very familiar with, but he says, but now you also put them, put them all aside, anger, wrath, malice, slander, abusive speech uh, from your mouth. Do not lie to one another. Since you laid aside the old self with its evil practices and put on the new self who is being renewed day unto day. It's important for us to realize that there is an old self. and that we put it aside. But that new self is, is in there, it's growing, it's giving its, its strength to us. And he puts it in this statement, I'm gonna finish that, where he says, laying aside the old self of practices, have put on the new self who is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created him. A renewal in which there is no distinction between Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, and free man. But God is all and in all. And so, according to what this is stating is that as we put off the old self, we become more and more God-like or the characteristics of God. When I think about the characteristics of God, I think about Galatians where it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Those eight qualities, love, joy, peace, etc. Those qualities become who we are because they are godly attitudes, they are godly ways of living and that we are to put aside or push aside those things. As God fills the temple, these things are going to be pushed away. And it's sometimes hard for us to put those new things into practice as we put off the old man. He says a few verses down, he said, And so as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, bearing, uh, bearing with one another and forgiving each other. Now I'm going to stop here because that's a tall order. Forgiving each other. You know, it, it's, it's one thing interesting about a congregation that is in a small community because Everyone knows everyone. And because of that, you went to, high, uh, to elementary school with a lot of these folks, some of them on the same pew that you're on, and you remember when they were in the third grade, they did whatever. And I've heard stories after stories of, of different things that people did when they were children, young adults, Teenagers, young parents, and how some of those offenses last for a lifetime. 
but they should not. Because he says with regard to that, he says, bearing with one another, forgiving each other, whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, you uh, so should you. Beloved, all these things put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you have been called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of God richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms, hymns, spiritual songs singing with thankfulness in your hearts for God. Now here's the part I really want you to remember. Whatsoever you do in word or deed. How does the rest of that go? Hmm, let me think. Whatsoever you do in word or deed. Oh, do all in the name of of the Lord and I can't always say that's been the way it is for me but you know because he lives in there because Christ lived in a human body I know the very fact that that I can overcome those weaknesses the Spirit knows where I need help. God knows where I need help. Turns my attention in Scripture and in prayer to the things that I need to understand and the things I need to overlook. But do all in the name of the Lord, giving thanks. Giving thanks to what God has done for us giving thanks to the fact that, that you are an individual who is a dwelling for God just like the temple and the tabernacle and the heavenly temple. Now, as Christ was on the earth, so were we. And what I want you to do as we sing the invitation song here in a moment and we leave this place remember this glorify God in your spirit you have been bought with a price therefore glorify God in your body if there's any way that you're subject to the song of encouragement, we urge you to come as we stand and sing a song of encouragement. Let us haste, so oh, haste to his bring. Tis a fount of love from the source above. And he bids us all freely drink. Will you come to the fountain free? Will you come? Tis for you and me, thirsty soul. Hear the welcome call. Tis a fountain open for all. There's a rock that's cleft, and no soul is left that may not its pure water share. Tis for you and me, and its stream I see. Let us hasten joyfully there. Will you come to the fountain free? Will you? Come, tis for you and me, 
thirsty soul.